Hello and welcome. It has become America's greatest enemy, but two decades ago, the name Al-Qaeda had no public presence. As it marks the 20th anniversary of its founding, Al-Qaeda has become a movement that's somewhat a different organization. Twenty years ago, Osama bin Laden, together with his loyal supporters, created a group with a goal of bringing about regime change in the Middle East, particularly in places such as Egypt and Saudi Arabia. The group, which became named Al-Qaeda, or the base, wanted to create hardline, Taliban-style Muslim theocracies in those countries. To do this, Al-Qaeda also targeted supporters of the current Arab leaders there, especially the USA. Well, ten years ago, Al-Qaeda took responsibility for the bombings of two American embassies in Africa, and three years on, or three years on, on September the 11th, 2001, they carried out one of the most daring acts of terrorism on U.S. soil. Since then, Al-Qaeda has become the inspiration for insurgent movements everywhere, from Afghanistan to the Philippines to North Africa. Despite the relentless U.S.-led war on terror, the loss of most of its leadership, and a backlash from people who once sympathized with its goals, the Al-Qaeda movement has survived. Well, today we ask, 20 years on, is Al-Qaeda still a global threat? Join in with your questions and comments. And joining me to uh, discuss the issue, I have author and journalist Christopher Hitchens, who believes that a lot of progress has been made in chasing Al-Qaeda out of Iraq. He's joining us from Stanford. From San Francisco is Justin Raimondo, the editorial director of Antiwar.com. His view is that Al-Qaeda is coming back in Afghanistan and wasn't much of a presence in Iraq, despite the U.S. administration's claims. And from Boston is Nazar Janabi, a fellow at the Washington Institute focusing on Iraqi and Middle Eastern security issues and democratization in the region. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. And uh, Nazar Janabi, if I could start with you and ask you if uh, Al-Qaeda can actually be defeated. Is there something that can visibly uh, or you know, clearly be stated as a defeat of Al-Qaeda in any way? Rez, uh, thank you very much for having me. And absolutely, yes. Uh, we, we've seen Al-Qaeda uh, started establishing itself in Iraq uh, in the past few years, and it became a serious threat to Iraq society and to the, to the region. Uh, we've seen uh, Al-Qaeda fighters flowing into Iraq. But let me say one thing. The worst enemy of Al-Qaeda is Al-Qaeda itself. Al-Qaeda established itself in the western uh, area of Iraq, and people, Arabs, Sunni, Muslims who live in that region lived under Al-Qaeda's regime, and they recognize that it's a flawed regime. It's, uh, their arguments are flawed. They, the atrocities that they committed against the community there defeated Al-Qaeda. So Al-Qaeda itself defeated itself in, uh, in Iraq. Iraqis, it, it, uh, it kind of uh, alienated its base in Iraq, and the end was uh, people, Iraqi people, who are Arab Muslims. So they are the right. same constituents that Al-Qaeda usually talks to, revolted against right. Al-Qaeda. and kicked Al-Qaeda out of the region. We had an email, uh, Nazar, I'd like to put you. It came from Sydney in Australia, and if I could ask you to answer this one. It came from S. Anoma, who says, I have no doubt that Al-Qaeda will turn 21 and perhaps even celebrate 40 or 50. Osama bin Laden will not be captured. What, what sort of future do you feel Al-Qaeda has? Uh, Al-Qaeda has, uh, has a, a, a very dull future especially in the, in the Arab region and in the Arab-speaking countries. When Al-Qaeda uh, is active in a non-Arab-speaking country, and this is, this is one of the key uh, problems that Al-Qaeda face, or the advantages that Al-Qaeda have in non-Arab-speaking countries, their fatwas, their, uh, their ideology, people in these areas who cannot speak Arabic have no means of returning to Quran and Sunnah in order to verify fatwas, Al-Qaeda issues, mm -hmm. and on that fatwa, Al-Qaeda kills people, uh, commits all kinds of atrocities. While in an Arab-speaking country, when, some, when, when uh, uh, as, as they call it, an emir of Al-Qaeda issues a fatwa that ICE is haram, people are going to look into, into Quran and look into Sunnah and say, hey, right. this is not true. This is absolutely not true. Let's get uh, on the line. And um, this is what defeats Al-Qaeda. Well, let's get on the line. Uh, Mehdi, who's in Morocco with a question. Mehdi, what would you like to ask? Yeah, I have a question. Right. What exactly is Al-Qaeda? Is it a group or is it an ideology followed by hundreds of people? What exactly is it? Because 
Okay. A lot of people would argue that it's something which is invisible, and it's just some documented ideology followed by a great number of people rather than a group. What okay. What is the actual let's, definition of Let's put of that to Justin uh, Raimondo, if uh, you could give us your, your perception on what Al-Qaeda actually is, please. Well, Al-Qaeda is our worst nightmare, and apparently it's come true. Um, look, Al-Qaeda would not even exist if it wasn't for U.S. foreign policy, a foreign policy of relentless aggression throughout the Middle East ever since the 1940s. We've overthrown countries, we've rampaged throughout the region, and Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden would be fringe characters who would have no following if not for the actions of U.S. foreign policy. So actually, our worst enemy is not Al-Qaeda, it is ourselves. <coughs> okay, well, I guess perhaps that means, uh, Justin, you see it more as, a, as an ideology or philosophy that, that has a strong anti-American uh, uh, slant to it. Well, I mean, Al-Qaeda is blowback. Al-Qaeda is the echo of our own atrocities. So, you know, I don't think it's an organization. Uh, and all this nonsense about Al-Qaeda in Iraq, I, I, I mean, how much of a base did they really have in Iraq until we invaded Iraq? They weren't even there. So, uh, uh, you know, That's it seems true. like a lot of nonsense. Hey, Christopher, it's uh, good to have you back on the show. And, and just a quick question as you, as you give your, your view on this. Let me nice also ask you. Ask me. Yeah, pleasure. Let me, uh, let's get also your view on, on the, some contradictions that some people see in the way America describes its, its sort of battle against Al-Qaeda. Just a few months ago, the CIA director, uh, Michael Hayden, was saying that Al-Qaeda was much weaker. It had been uh, nearly defeated strategically in Iraq and in Afghanistan and, uh, sorry, in Saudi Arabia and had significant setbacks. How do you regard the position and the strength of Al-Qaeda 20 years on? Well, I'm not sure I would take the CIA's word for this, or, or on anything, as a matter of fact. But the uh, evidence from Iraqi witnesses, um, very believable, uh, chiefly Sunni uh, Arab Muslim local figures, um, is that al-Qaeda has been repudiated in overwhelming degrees by the population that it claimed to be speaking for. Just look no further than what happens in Baghdad yesterday. The Abu Hanifa Mosque, a very fine old Sunni mosque in the Adamir Quarter, blown up at prayer time. We don't yet know the number of casualties. The evident target was a member of the local Sunni awakening forces, who I regret to say was, was killed. But that, that's not just the only thing that shows that what nonsense Mr. Raimondo has been talking. You'd have to ask the citizens of India and of the Philippines, uh, two large and, th and relatively thriving Asian democracies, uh, who had their own differences with the American em empire in their time, always targeted by al-Qaeda, uh, with secessionist movements that want to wrench great ch chunks of their territory away and convert them into, as you correctly described in your introduction, Taliban-style uh, theocracies. The Taliban takeover of the people of Afghanistan, taking advantage of the post-Soviet civil war, isn't the result of American imperialism in the region. It is the result of a well-thought-out campaign by certain extreme Wahhabis who practice a, a horrible cult, called, they, they call it takfir, they excommunicating anyone who doesn't agree with them and saying they can be killed. Uh, in the name of God, as these uh, um, Sunni Muslim Arabs were yesterday in Baghdad. I'll get, I'll get to, uh, I'll until, 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 it, until it's understood that this is a hideous challenge to all the decencies of Arab and Muslim society and can't be blamed on the innumerable errors of American foreign policy, we'll, you don't have a chance of analyzing it properly. Let's get a response from uh, Justin Raimondo on this, uh, on what Christopher Hitchens was saying. Well, it's well known that Al-Qaeda was financed supported by the U.S. during the Soviet-Afghan uh, War. So, I mean, who built all well those underground who? chambers? And it's well known to everyone, Christopher, as you well know. It's nonsense. We supported the Afghan Mujahideen, and now it's That's blowback. True. It's coming at us. It's just like a Frankenstein the Northern monster. Alliance. The, no the Northern Alliance was America's favorite Afghan movement, and the Northern Alliance fought the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and was telling us before September 11th, don't be deceived. These well, people really And now we are supporting they, 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 the Northern look, Alliance look what they've done, look against what they've the done. Taliban. Yes, okay, gentlemen. Yes. Oh, nonsense. The same should. Soviet people, just, well, they were pro-Soviet. Totally gentlemen, point. gentlemen, let me just do one totally thing. Let me get Nazar Janabi in here and ask, uh, looking at what Al-Qaeda has uh, yeah, what achieved in 20 years, uh, what, who is, who is uh, joining Al-Qaeda now, uh, Mr. Janabi? Who, who's Al-Qaeda recruiting nowadays? Uh, Al-Qaeda will always have, have recruits, and this 
this is something that uh, that that's yeah, that's going to that? happen. There will always be injustice in the world, and out of the hundreds of millions of uh, of Muslims, Al Qaeda would will always be able to find uh, a handful of people who are unhappy, who have been subject to injustice, and this is something that is going to persist. Mm -hmm. the The whole idea is that Al Qaeda's ideology had collapsed. Well, let's let uh, me excuse me. Go, go ahead, Christopher. To what injustice has Mr. Bin, to what injustice was Muhammad Atta ever subjected? To what injustice was Mr. Bin Laden subjected? Don't you notice that when the the Al Qaeda forces in Indonesia put bombs in Bali, they bring down the national income by a full point in just one one week? They're not the product of poverty and unemployment. They are the cause of it. Okay. They're the cause of injustice. Let's let's do one thing. Let's get Muhammad. To acid, they want to throw acid in the faces of women. Uh, I was, Is this I was justice? Not injustice about this never talk. existed uh, not until Al Qaeda, right? right, gentlemen. Wait, let's just wait a second. We've got Muhammad on the line from Maryland. Let's get our viewers uh, a chance to ask a question or make a comment. Uh, Muhammad mm. in Maryland, what would you like to say? Yes, uh, my question is, I mean, uh, the the same group which was fighting in Afghanistan for the seven to nine years, I never heard about this group as Al Qaeda. The moment 9/11 happened, then everywhere I heard Al Qaeda. One thing. Second, that whatever action Al Qaeda, so-called Al Qaeda, they committed on 9/11. Similar, exactly similar action George Bush did in Afghanistan and killed hundreds and thousands of people with thousands and billions of dollars of property destruction. What is the difference? Okay. Both actions are the same. Why George Bush should not be penalized for the same thing? Okay, Mohammed, thank you for, for your comment from Maryland. Now, gentlemen, we're going to touch more on this in a moment. We have to pause for a break here, but there's more on our discussion about Al-Qaeda when we come back.